A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire, flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, here I am. God said, come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt and have heard their cry of complaint against their slave drivers. So I know well what they are suffering. Therefore, I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and lead them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, but when I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. If they ask me, what is his name? What am I to tell them? God replied, I am who am. Then he added, this is what you shall tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses. Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus I am to re be remembered through all generations. Word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them. And the rock was the Christ. Yet, God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us, so, the, so that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did, and suffer death by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example, and they have been written down as a warning to us, upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure should take care not to fall. The word of the Lord. Repent, O oh my people, says the Lord. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Glory to you, the word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in a reply, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you don't repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a thick tree planted in his orchard, and when he came in search of fruit on it, but found none, he said to the gardener, for three years now I have come in search of fruit on this thick tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord.
repent and believe in the gospel. That's how we started our Lenten journey this year and every year, especially this year when we celebrate the year of mercy. And what we heard in the gospel today is about what Pope Francis tries to preach all the time, all the time. God never gets tired of forgiving. God is love. How many people sometimes think for what I have done in my past, even God himself cannot forgive? What a wrong approach. That's why we have so darkness. No forgiving, no light. No forgiving, no joy. Joy comes with forgiving. That's how we reconcile in our families, with our friends, other people. Nobody is perfect. That's why the best way to reconcile and to keep peace in your heart is to forgive. When we forgive, Pope Francis is very, as we see, very human, and recently when he went to Mexico and he did wonderful, gave wonderful uh, homilies, you can go online and, and read them, and it's, it's great source of spirituality, very practical. He's not talking uh, about something, uh, you know, theoretical, it's just practical. Anyway, uh, one day the newspapers were filled the uh, news that Pope Francis lost his school in Mexico. And some of us know what happened. He was, as usual, greeting people and the first uh, row and was uh, handicapped people. And always he comes, he bless them, kiss them. And he has big heart, shows us how to be with those who are the uh, very big, great image of, of Jesus those who suffer, and anyway, one of, of those uh, standing ladies over there, very, very pious and religious, pulled Pope Francis such a way that he almost fell and on the person in the wheelchair, and he got very serious. Always he's smiling, but he got very serious, and he says in Spanish, no seas egoista, don't be selfish. Oh, Pope Francis is only for me. <laughs> Don't be selfish. First reading tells us about... We need to read it again, again, and again. The first revelation of God, the first time in the history of humankind, we heard the name of God, Yahweh. I am who I am. The essence of God is now. There is no past, there is no future, it's now. When we think about power of now, which is very profound, we can be like God. That's what he wants us to do. Be now, your experience from the past should be the source of your wisdom, what to do tomorrow and the future. What not to do and what to do with positive light that uh, he wants us to do. On Tuesday at 7 p.m. here we'll be celebrating parish reconciliation and everybody will get uh, what Pope Francis put in his letter for Year of Mercy that we sometimes forget, forget. works of mercy, corporal, and spiritual, seven and seven, 
altogether 14. Try to study them and try to see one single thing that Jesus wants you to do this week. Like people get the Bible, you open the passage, and then you read passage of the Bible, New Testament, Old Testament, and you think, what does it mean to me, not to others, not to my family, not to my friends, to me, what Jesus wants me to do? It's the only way we can change our lives. It's the only way what Jesus means by repent, which Greek word is menatoiete. Change the way of your thinking without going out of the box in your thinking. We cannot make any changes. One simple thing this week, one work of mercy, read them, seven corporal, seven spiritual, and you will see how inspired you can be, how peaceful you can be, how much progress you can make on the level of consciousness, being on the higher level, closer to this great essence of God, who is, who He is. Today, tonight, our uh, brothers and sisters that we can call already elect, because they are already elected by the Pope, by the Pope, by Bishop, and by us, we, they will receive and they will stay for scrutiny they will stay with us when we profess our faith. When we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. First time, the church allows them to stay with us till Easter, when they will say with us first time the creed. They will receive tonight creed to study, to memorize, to make it their own. The sponsors are supposed to make sure that they know it before Father Jeff will baptize them here or they will profess faith with us. But it's not about that, memorizing. You can know the Bible by heart. You can profess creed five times a day and can be very meaningless when we put faith in action, when our creed becomes our life, that when God that I believe in, Jesus that I believe in, who is risen, and I'm supposed to be the person of resurrection, is re really present by my actions. That's how we witness to mercy of God. That's how we profess our faith. Like St. James would say, faith without works is dead. Show me your faith without works of mercy. I will show you, like St. James says, faith with the works of mercy. That's what Pope Francis wants us to do as Catholics, Christians, and also that's how we need to be in God's presence and His light, His love, His forgiveness. And everybody is invited. Once again, I would like to repeat for those who didn't come to our profound parish mission. And they missed so much. You know why? Because, I don't know. <laughs> Probably you didn't miss too much. I was trying to be very proudful and I would be humiliated very soon.
humbled? No, I'm, because I mentioned the topic of the mission was we are people of resurrection. Yes, we look at the cross. We see the power of the cross. But Jesus leads us to resurrection, which is to life, to joy, to happiness. And Pope Francis says, sometimes Catholics, especially Catholics, are like those who live in Lenten season without Easter. It's like being in all the time in Advent without Christmas. Miss the essence. Easter is our goal. But we get there very much so, very lively, when we put our creed, our belief, our faith in action. Those, Pope Francis says in his letter, uh, in his document for, for uh, Joy of the Gospel, those who encountered Jesus are free from sin, from sorrow, from inner emptiness, and from loneliness. It's so true. It's so true. And you know how we can find Jesus? The best way? You would say yes at Mass. Yes at the Eucharist. Yes in adoration. Yes in prayer. Yes in reading the Bible. But even more so in others. Your smile. Your nice gesture. Your work of mercy. You will see, all of a sudden, in your heart, in your soul, you encountered Jesus. Mother Teresa used to say, always, at the end of your day, when nobody is there with you, it's you and God, in your conscience, in your soul, in your heart. Even if you have people around you, very close, very close, you're by yourself with God. Use your five fingers and say to yourself as the last thing, as a prayer before you go to bed, you did this to 